Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for gravity and our solar system. In this digital reteach, we'll be looking at the TEEK, or Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, for 6.11b. And in that TEEK, it is our job to have you guys understand that gravity is the force that governs the motion of our solar system. Now, how do you get credit for this reteach is very important. First off, take notes while the video plays. Your teacher should have given you a Cornell note worksheet, and on this worksheet, there's going to be some questions on the left-hand side and some things for you to do on the left-hand side. So follow all the instructions in the video. If the video asks you to write down or work out an example, it is expected to be on your notes. Make sure you're listening and looking for all directions as well. When finished, show your notes to your teacher. Only your teacher can give you credit. Once you have credit for the reteach, your teacher will tell you how to do the reassessment. All right, let's begin. Now, before we get going too far on this, like always, if this gets going too fast for you, just go ahead and pause the video. The nice thing is you can go back and watch it. You can click backwards. You can do whatever you need to do to make sure you get all this information so that you can learn from your mistakes on this TEEK. So first off, we want to think about big objects in space. And when we're talking about big objects in space, we're talking like the moon, you know, our planet Earth, or just any of the other planets. And we want to think about what they really want to do. And honestly, what they really want to do is they want to travel in a straight line. If you're in outer space, once you get moving, you would travel in a straight line forever. There's really nothing to stop you. Unless there's some stuff close to you, but we'll get there later. So in your notes, think about what, what do the big objects really want to do? And the answer to that is very simple. Really, they want to go straight. Now for the next part of your notes, I want you to compare the size of our sun to the other planets. And I think this picture does a really good job of showing this off. Most of the times when you see a picture in a textbook or when you see a picture even later on in this video, you're going to see that the sun looks almost too small. And that's true. It's a hard thing for us to put in a diagram and make everything work. So in this picture, check out how big the sun is compared to, say, Jupiter and some of these other planets. And even as you work your way down to Earth, look at how small the Earth looks compared to the sun. Now, that's just if you could set them all side by side. Now, clearly, they don't sit side by side like this in real life. But if you could, this would be the difference. Now, what's really cool is when you get to eighth grade, you realize and you're going to learn that our sun is nothing special. Really, the sun's not even a big star. It's very average. So it's kind of amazing how big they can get. So this is just an average star. But compared to us and the planet that we live on, we are pretty tiny and the sun is pretty big. So let's kind of move on. So this is a good diagram for how the planets really move. So what I want you to do is kind of draw something like this in your notes. Now you don't have to have everything in motion, but you know, if you get the sun in the center, and then if we have some sort of planets that are kind of traveling around the sun, that's really what we want to notice. So go ahead and pause this video to work on a diagram if you need to, or even click backwards so you can see this little video play over and over a couple times. Okay, so you should be to the point now where you're realizing that we said just a second ago that planets want to go in a straight line. But according to this diagram, that's clearly not happening. This is where gravity kicks in. So on your notes, you have a section for gravity. So the thing about gravity is it's a force. And specifically, to keep things really simple, let's just say it's a force that likes to pull things towards one another. So if you have two objects in outer space, gravity should eventually pull them together and they should crash into one another. Now, when it comes to gravity, sometimes gravity is stronger, sometimes it's weaker. So how does the strength of gravity really get calculated? Well, the good news for you guys is right now, we don't need to get into all the mathematics behind this. Right now, I just want you to think of two things. For depending about how strong you're going to have gravity, the first object is really how much mass does that object have? 
So think about how big that sun was. That's a huge object with a ton of mass. And even Earth, really, I mean, Earth is not small. You know, when compared to the sun, it looks small. But it's still an object that has a lot of mass. Because both of these objects have a lot of mass, that's going to make gravity be a factor. Now, there's another factor as well. And that is really how far apart are they? Now, we're still a good distance from the sun. If we were closer to the sun, we would feel the effect of gravity more. Gravity would feel stronger. But as it is, we're pretty far away, but we're still really big, and the sun's still really big. So no matter what, gravity can be felt between the two objects. So let's go ahead and put... So here's the big picture. Let's take everything we've learned about what big objects want to do, and then let's take what we learned about gravity, and let's apply it on our notes right here. So as you watch this picture, you can see the Earth revolving around the sun. Now, once again, the sun's really too small for this picture. That's okay. Now, if we think about the first thing planets want to do, the first thing planets want to do is they want to run away. So the Earth would love to run away out here to the right in a straight line. Or right now, it would love to run away and go straight up. But that doesn't happen because there's another force. So the other force is gravity, and that's the big one here. The gravity of the sun and the earth together are, would love to crash the earth into the sun. It would love to grab onto the earth and pull it in right into the sun. But as you notice, that still doesn't happen. So think of it like this. Both of those forces are going to work at the same time. So the earth wants to run away in a straight line. So right now, it would love to run straight up. But at the exact same time, gravity says, no, wait a minute, come back here, you. And it grabs onto the Earth, and it tries to pull it in. Because they're both happening at the same time, now we get that circular motion, that elliptical path that the Earth takes around the sun, because they're both going at the same time. Now, if you ever want the name of the motion, or the name of the force specifically, I'm sorry, if you want the name of the force for why the Earth wants to go in a straight line, that's inertia. Now, you don't really need that yet. In eighth grade, that'll be a major thing. But for right now, just know that all objects want to go in a straight line. Something has to turn them. And in this case, it's gravity that pulls it and causes it to turn. So each time it tries to run away straight, gravity pulls it back, and we keep doing this loop. So that's really what we want to get in the notes. We want to get one arrow as a force that shows the Earth trying to go straight, and then we want another arrow which shows gravity trying to pull it in. And as you get those two arrows, that's going to cause the Earth to go in this elliptical orbit. All right, Tigers, that's really it for this review. That's all there is to it. So go ahead and finish up your notes. Make sure they're looking really good. Write a brief summary at the bottom of your notes to kind of tie in everything that you've learned. And then go back and show it to your teacher, and they will tell you what you need to do next to get the retest. Best of luck.